Welcome to this online lecture of modern physics. Uh, this is the topics that we have discussed so far. We discussed atomic models. We are discussing atomic models. And we discussed Thomson's atomic model. Then we considered the experiment, which tried to test the model. Then we considered Rutherford's atomic model, uh, atomic spectra, and Bohr's atomic model. So in this lecture, we want to discuss this experiment, Frank Hertz experiment, which uh, further proved that energies in atoms, electron energies in atoms are discrete, they're not continuous. So we want to, the lecture plan for this lecture, we want to discuss this Frank Hertz experiment. Let's start with this Frank Hertz experiment then. Let's start with the experimental setup. So what do you think this shape suggests? Uh, it's not exactly the discharge tube. It is a glass tube, very similar to that of discharge tube. There are electrodes placed in this, but now it is not rarefied gas. What we are considering here is a glass tube, and this glass tube is filled with mercury vapor. There are some arrangement. Let's see each of these arra arrangements step by step. So, why does what does that red color indicate? Right, these are the positive terminals. Negative these are the negative yeah. terminals, and uh, this is a coil. So when current passes from this coil, when you supply, uh, when you connect this DC power supply, what will happen is current will start flowing through that coil. And when current flows, it will start heating. The coil will heat up. And in the process, after it is heated, what will happen is it will start emitting electrons. What do you call this process? There are a couple of process in which electrons are emitted. One of them can be uh, the process which is called as photoelectric effect. What happens in photoelectric effect? So light is absorbed by metal and electrons are emitted. In this case, when we are heating that coil, I'm saying that after the coil is uh, hot, it will start emitting electrons. What is this process called as? No, it is now not photoelectric. Photoelectric effect is when light is absorbed and electrons are emitted. This process of emission of electron is called as thermionic emission. So what is, why it is different from that discharge tube? In case of discharge tube, electrons are emitted. They travel in the glass tube. But why are, what is the reason behind the emission of electrons in that case? In that case, it is breakdown, right? there is sufficiently high potential and there is electric bre uh, breakdown that causes the emission of electron in this case now it is the thermionic emission furthermore this glass tube is not uh, rarefied gas it is mercury vapor filled in there and these electrons now are emitted due to this process of thermionic emission then what you have is this arrangement again the red electrodes there suggest that they are positive and they are negative. So we have uh, mercury vapor filled in the glass tube. We have these electrons emitted due to thermionic emission. And this uh, next arrangement where we have this dotted line here suggests that it is greed. This is called, a, this, is, this is a mesh. Remember, it is not sol solid uh, electrode. It is mesh so there are space in between so that electrons now can travel through that electrode it is not solid electrode and that's why it is denoted by this dotted line so uh, in this case now what will be the direction in which the electrons are emitted which are emitted due to thermionic emission see the grid is at higher potential it is positive electrons are emitted from this coil and therefore electrons once emitted they will experience a force towards this grid since it is positively charged electrode and therefore electron will now accelerate it, accelerate towards that grid and in the process when i say accelerate they will gain in energy is this clear is there any doubt right so this is simple arrangement so far and now what we have is this plate which is a solid electrode now this is this is the plate which is a solid electron and there is some potential difference applied between plate and grid so that grid is at higher potential as compared to the plate i'll explain why we need that arrangement why this small potential is required i'll explain that apart from that what do you think this a suggest here so what if the current flows through this connection this circuit this part of the circuit then this ammeter will show the current reading how much current is flowing through that 
okay now let's come to this point why do we have small potential difference between grid and the plate why it is so is because what will happen now is these electrons will be accelerated towards the grid if they have sufficient energy when they reach the grid they will continue to move in the direction despite this small potential difference since potential difference here let me call this as v0 let me end this as v so since v0 is much more as compared to v what will happen is energy gained by the electron when they travel from this coil to grid is e into v0 if they don't assuming that they don't lose any of their energies the energy will be e, e into v0 now since grid is a mesh arrangement electron will pass through them and they will continue to move towards the plate now even if there is attraction the, there is tendency of electron to get ac uh, accelerated towards this grid after they pass through that in between grid and plate what will happen is because they have sufficiently high energy they will continue to move towards the plate and once they reach the plate they will be absorbed there and now since again this the, what will happen is these electrons will then flow through this uh, part of the circuit and it will show the current so why we have this small potential is because of this reason suppose we have electron which is just present here and it doesn't have sufficiently large energy it has small energy due to since it is a stray electron it is moving with very small velocity and if that happens they won't be able to reach the plate as far as they don't have sufficiently high energy electrons won't be able to reach the plate and therefore they will not contribute to the current here which is uh, measured by this ammeter right so this small potential here makes sure that electrons with small energies with insufficient energies will not reach the plate and they will not contribute to the current so the arrangement make sure that only those electrons will contribute who have sufficiently high energy and they will only measured in this measured by this ammeter so this ammeter now will show us how many electrons are reaching the plate is this arrangement clear to everyone are there any doubts regarding this so let's now consider what what will uh, let's see the observations that we get when we set up this experiment i again again this is small in the corner you can see the experimental setup this voltage is v0 whereas this voltage is v and we are saying that v0 is greater as compared to v this v is just making sure that the stray electrons don't reach the plate and they don't contribute the current right and this is coil which looks solid because of the small shape of that circuit diagram so what we expect is this suppose i plot this graph where this is v0 remember this is v0 there is there are now three different potentials we are talking about there are three different power supplies one this what is what is purpose of the first power supply this power supply which i just encircled it is for thermionic emission so that electrons are emitted then we have this v this second uh, power supply what does that do what is purpose of that someone please unmute and explain why do we have this potential here yes it will not attract basically it will make sure that only those electrons who have sufficiently high energy when they pass through the grid to reach the plate otherwise if there are stray electrons there are electrons who have very small energies they will be absorbed at the grid and they won't contribute to any current so this v ensures that only sufficient only in electrons with sufficiently high energy contribute to the current right and what is purpose of v0 what does that do it is the accelerating potential isn't it so this v0 is basically the accelerating potential yes it is potential provided to the uh, emitted electrons so that they can gain energy those electrons are emitted from thermionic emission now will gain energy due to this v0 right so this is the arrangement and i am plotting this graph to observe the outcomes where we, uh, on x axis we have v0 on y axis we have current or the plate current to be more precise this i is plate current 
why it is called as split current should be clear it is obvious this current is measured for the part of the circuit which is connected with connected to the plate and those electrons which pass from that plate which reach the plate eventually will contribute to contribute to the current and therefore we are calling it the plate current now what should we observe is this thing as you go on increasing the if if, if it was vacuum what will happen is if this glass tube wasn't if there wasn't anything in the glass tube then what will happen is all the electrons which are emitted in the process of thermionic emission at this coil will gain energy due to this accelerating potential and all of them will reach the plate here and therefore uh, we don't have to worry about what is no matter what is voltage and no mat matter what is current depending on what is temperature of this uh, temperature of the coil all the electrons will contribute to the current and we will get a constant current in that case but now what we have is we have mercury weapon field in the glass tube and because of that electrons will now start colliding with the atoms of mercury and therefore it may happen that not all the electrons have sufficiently high energy at the grid and therefore it may happen that not all these electrons which are emitted in the process reach the plate and therefore what we, you you should observe is this kind of nature for current versus voltage graph this dashed line here shows that nature so what should happen is as you go on increasing the this voltage v0 more and more current should or sorry more and more electrons should start reaching the plate and therefore current will go on increasing is it fine do you agree with me on this that if we go on increasing voltage this current should be of this nature if we plot this graph the graph should be of this nature is it fine i, I think there are no doubts so but what is observed is basically this this dashed line here shows the expected nature of the current but what is observed is this graph where we have sudden dips where the current increases according to this dashed line up to this point but suddenly when the voltage is has this particular value the current suddenly drops and then as you go on increasing the voltage again as you go on increasing the accelerating potential once again this current will goes on current goes on increasing suddenly when voltage has this as value it again drops and this happens for all these voltages so what you observe are these dips suddenly the current reduces for that particular value of that voltage and these values are 4.9 then what is this it is 9.8 and what is next value what do you think next voltage is here what should be the voltage if you can see the pattern it is 14.7 this difference these dips occur at equi distance on this x axis or on this voltage axis this distance though it looks more this is 44.9 volt this also is 4.9 volt and this also the difference between these dips is 4.9 volt so after equal value of this potential what is observed is the current suddenly drops when this voltage is changed so this v0 is increased from zero to higher value and as expected the current goes on increasing until we have voltage which which is equal to 4.9 volt where the current suddenly drops then again as you go on increasing this v0 the current goes on increasing but after 4.9 volts after this first dip the sudden current uh, the current suddenly drops which is again 9.8 volts and then next drop occurs at 4.7 and this process continues these dips will occur at after each of this uh, interval along x axis of 4.9 volts is it fine is it clear is this observation clear to everyone uh, let me ask you this thing suppose i have a charged particle which is being accelerated through this potential difference let's call that that this is an electron okay so this electron is emitted here and when it is emitted it has zero kinetic energy and suppose voltage applied between the two plates is v and now what will happen is this electron will accelerate will be accelerating towards the next electron uh, next electrode which is positive electrode what will be the energy of the electron when it just reaches the plate right so many someone has already answered it correctly when an electron 
is accelerated through some potential difference of v or any charged particle when is accelerated through potential difference of v energy gained by that charged particle is equal to product of the charge of the particle and the potential difference by which it is accelerated and now here you should see or you should get the uh, idea for the definition of electron volt if you accelerate one electron by potential difference of 1 volt how much energy that electron will gain it is going to be equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb into 1 volt so one electron volt therefore is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules because these are in si unit this energy is now in si unit the product is in si unit and that is how we define electron volt. It is energy gained by the electron when it is accelerated by potential difference of one volt. So that is how we define uh, that is how we define electron this unit electron volt. And in this case, in case of Frank Hertz experiment, what is happening is when electron gain an energy which is equal to 4.9 electron volt because the potential difference is 4.9 volts and the, the energy now is going to be 4.9 into charge of electron which is 4.9 electron volt so when electron gain this energy 4.9 electron volt the current suddenly drops then for that ha happens for uh, any multiple of this energy which is 4.9 electron volts is this observation clear so whenever electron has energy which is integer multiple of 4.9 electron volt the current suddenly drops as far as the glass tube is filled with mercury atoms you have to keep that in mind it is not true for any uh, gas when this glass tube is filled with mercury atom that happens if we consider some other uh, had, uh, some other gas which is filled in the glass tube then what will happen is this voltage will change but similar observation should be there is it fine is it okay are there any questions if there are no questions, can someone tell me, can someone guess why the current suddenly drops? All right, let's discuss why does this happen. So this is the kind of graph that we observe, that when V0 increases, the current has dips in it at equal potentials. This is 4.9 volt. The next drop occurs at 4.9 volt once again. And next dip occurs at 4.9 volts, and this is continue and why does this happen is because of this reason electrons now when they are accelerated when they are moving towards the grid they continuously collide with the atoms in the glass tube in our discussion we are saying that the glass tube is filled with mercury vapor so these electrons will continuously collide with mercury atoms right and whenever there is inelastic collision they will lose their energy electrons will lose their energy to mercury atoms what is inelastic collision? Energy anyway is conserved. It doesn't matter whether it is elastic collision or inelastic collision. But in case of elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. In case of inelastic energy, however, kinetic energy is not conserved. Remember, energy is always conserved as far as we are not considering a very high energetic reaction where, where mass is also converted to energy or energy is converted to mass. Inelastic collision, kinetic energy now is not conserved so what happens to the energy because all of you have seen the this principle of conservation of energy as far as we leave out the mass due to friction so you are saying that kinetic energy is lost into friction any other ideas what happens to energy so what happens in case of inelastic collision is kinetic energy is converted to all the sorts of energy it could make uh, it could create sound waves so energy is convert kinetic energy is converted to this sound energy it there could be rise in temperature so temperature of the system uh, or the surrounding rises so kinetic energy is converted to temperature so in case of when we say that there is inelastic collision there are all these sorts of energies to which this kinetic energy is converted right heating effect is there and there are so many other processes because of which the kinetic energy is lost in this case in case of our experiment we are talking about we are talking at atomic level and therefore there is no question of sound energy or uh, temperature what happens basically is these atoms mercury atoms they absorb the kinetic energy 
by the electrons and that energy causes the atom to excite so if we have at a, if we have mercury atoms at ground state if their energy is the minimum possible energy for the electron what happens is that these electrons now absorb the kinetic energy these electrons in the mercury atom they absorb the kinetic energy of the electrons which are emitted in thermionic emission and they go to higher energy level so this inelastic collision occurs in which electrons emitted in thermionic emission they lose their kinetic energy to electrons in mercury atom where mercury atom is excited where the electrons in the mercury atom goes to higher energy state and that happens that cannot occur at any energy level we have been saying that uh, energies in atom are discrete there are discrete energy levels so if the energy of the electrons are not sufficient enough to excite the electron in the mercury atom there will not be inelastic collision these collisions then in that case will be elastic as far as electrons don't give energy to so let me again say that what i'm trying to tell you what happens is if these electrons emitted in thermionic emission have sufficient energy so that they can excite the mercury atom then they lose their kinetic energy to mercury atom and mercury mercury atoms are excited but if their energies don't match then there will be collision but that collision will not be in elastic collision it will be elastic collision and in elastic collision what will happen is the energy of the electrons which are emitted due to thermionic emission is not lost what 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 happens is their direction changes but their energies are still uh, almost same as as that of before the collision and therefore they will continue to move in the same uh, in different direction but once they uh, they start moving in the direction of the grid their energy will be conserved right so only th so what will happen is when they have energies when these electrons emitted in thermionic emission have energies which can excite the mercury atoms there will be inelastic collision and they will lose their energy to mercury atoms exciting them whereas if their energies are not sufficient enough the collisions will be elastic collisions and the energies of the electron will not be absorbed by the atom that will be conserved that kinetic energy will be conserved and when do we have inelastic collisions they occur at this particular voltage 4.9 and then integer multiple of 4.9 volts and therefore what is energy of the electron at which inelastic collision occurs it occurs at 4.9 electron volts so what we can conclude from that is that there should be two energy levels in mercury atom where e2 minus e1 is equal to 4.9 electron volt and because these energy differences now is equal to 4.9 volt at this particular energy the electrons are losing their energies to atoms exciting them is it fine is it making any sense and if i want to find this in si units in joules i have to multiply this by charge of the electron which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules so we should there should be two energy levels in mercury atom whose difference is given by this value 4.9 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules you can do the maths now and you will find out you can figure out what is this number okay now what will happen will these atoms stay in the excited state forever suppose these uh, electrons emitted in thermionic emission inelastically collide with the atoms of mercury and mercury atoms then are excited due to the collisions now will these atoms stay there forever what will happen next natural tendency of any system is to attain the lowest possible energy and that will ha happen with these atoms also so what will happen is this atom will immediately de excite right so if we have mercury atom which is excited due to collision between the electron and the atom what will happen is it will eventually de excite and therefore in the process of that de excitation it should emit a photon 
so this is the story these electrons are emitted from the coil in the process of thermionic emission as they travel as they accelerate towards the grid their energy kinetic energy goes on increasing when the electron attain this energy which is 4.9 electron volt then at that particular energy the mercury atoms now can be excited because two energy levels have the same difference and therefore these electrons lose their kinetic energy in elastic collision to the mercury atoms excite the atoms and they themselves lose their energy kinetic energy their energy will be zero and therefore when they reach here their kinetic energy is not sufficient enough to reach the plate and therefore they will be absorbed at the grid and no current is observed for those electrons at that particular energy uh, at that particular voltage the excited mercury atoms now eventually de excite they have to de excite they will attain the lower lower uh, energy possible and in the process they will emit photon and what should be the how, now can you calculate the frequency of the photon which is emit which are emitted in the process of de excitation how can you do it nu where nu is the frequency of the photon which is emitted in the process and therefore these photons which are emitted due to de excitation of mercury atoms will have frequency which is given by 4.9 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules divided by h which is 10 to the power minus 34 joule second therefore this in this way now you can calculate you, you can use a calculator and then find out what is the frequency of the light which is emitted in the process so this is what is observed and why so and and you can actually observe these radiations which are having this particular frequency uh, that's all for this lecture i just wanted to discuss this frank uh, frankhurst experiment